So I'm going to spend some time um, just talking about breast cancer clinical trials and the um, existing disparities. This is a very important topic just because clinical trials are a huge aspect of management of patients with all types of cancers, not just breast cancer. Clinical trials really are the mainstay in the development and validation of new cancer therapies as well as treatment options. Unfortunately, less than 1 in 20 adult patients with cancer participate in a clinical trial. The disparity is even starker for um, racial and ethnic minorities, with data showing that the clinical trial enrollment of racial um, minorities has actually decreased over the past 14 years. And what we find now is that clinical trial participants are disproportionately non-Hispanic white men with higher education levels as well as higher household incomes. So literature shows that between 1990 and 2000, 89% of clinical trial participants were white, 10.5% were African American, a dismal 0.4% were Hispanic, and an even lower percentage were Asian Americans. What's been interesting is when we look at um, literature in terms of clinical trial representations from 2008 to 2018, the representation of um, the black population is now down to 3.1% of trial participants, and there's been a slight increase in Hispanic patient population representing 6.1%. Now, when it comes to um, breast cancer and um, and, and, and clinical trials. Um, from my um, previous lecture, I mentioned that triple negative breast cancer, it's an aggressive breast cancer subtype that disproportionately affects African American women. What's been great in the last couple years is we've had studies looking at the role of certain um, medications and certain chemotherapy agents in the treatment of metastatic triple negative breast cancer. Unfortunately, when we look at the trial participants in those studies, the Olympiad study, which was looking at the role of PARP inhibitors in patients with a BRCA1 or 2 mutation, um, had 65% of those patients were white, 32.2% were Asian, and 2.4% were others. So for a disease that disproportionately affects African American women, they were not represented in those studies. Another um, new um, drug agent, um, a, a, a drug antibody conjugate called saxitazumab, enrolled more black women in their study, but only 7.4% of those patients were um, African American um, women. Now, clinical trials are important for resolving the cancer health disparities. Um, in the short term, they are associated with high quality guideline driven um, health care. So patients enrolled in clinical trials have access to closer monitoring, which generally leads to better outcomes. In the longer term, the heterogeneity of trial participants is important for the development of new interventions that are broadly effective and not just effective in a subset of the population that's generally overrepresented um, in this clinical trials. So it's important to be aware of um, the barriers that um, exist and that are likely contributing to lower um, rates of participation in clinical trials by patients in underrepresented minority groups. Um, patient barriers such as awareness of clinical trials, um, access to institutions with such trials, um, experiences with medical care, as well as doctor-patient relationships are all potential barriers um, contributing to um, disparities in clinical trial enrollment. Um, patients in underrepresented minority groups have higher rates of distrust of um, medical professionals due to history of unethical um, research practices in the U.S. in the early um, 20th century up until the 1970s when the Tuskegee syphilis study um, finally closed. So these are still pretty recent um, events that um, have contributed to um, distrust of um, the medical healthcare system. I think acknowledging healthcare professionals' um, um, uh, um, barriers um, 
is also important. Um, healthcare professionals' awareness of um, clinical trials, their own biases and perceptions of patients' race and ethnicities definitely contribute to barriers which are likely leading to um, decre decreased um, rates of um, clinical trial participation by um, these patients. So the question is, what can we do? What can primary care providers, what could healthcare providers in the community do to um, help um, narrow um, the disparities um, in clinical trial um, involvement by um, underrepresented minority groups? Um, there's this um, really great paper that was published in 2017 um, out of um, Boston University where they um, wanted to get the um, perception of cancer care and clinical trials in the black community. And they were trying to see how um, coordination between um, oncology teams, primary care teams, and the patients could improve um, clinical trial um, enrollment by um, black people. So the study itself was a community-engaged research partnership between an academic hospital and community-based organizations. What they did was using um, focus groups, they interviewed um, healthcare providers, patient advocates, cancer survivors, and this patient's families. They interviewed them and asked questions pertaining to barriers to cancer clinical trials experienced by black residents of the city of Boston, barriers to cancer care, potential strategies or approaches for overcoming the barriers that were identified um, during the interview. What they found was that, so what they found from their interview was that some participants identified clinical trials as beneficial. However, the overall perception of clinical trials conjured feelings of fear and exploitation um, in the participants. What was interesting was that uh, many of these participants described a level of trust with their primary care providers that did not exist with their oncologist. Uh, many primary care physicians who um, participated in this study um, described circumstances where patients returned to them seeking support and advice regarding their hospital-based cancer treatment and consultations. The findings from the study suggest that relationships with primary um, care providers may help reduce some of the fear and distrust experienced by patients diagnosed with cancer. And basically, greater coordination with primary care physicians, community health centers, with oncology providers may be an important step for improving the quality of cancer care in communities and also increase in awareness of clinical trials. So it's really important for our community providers, for primary care physicians um, to have these conversations with their patients that have been diagnosed with cancer, that when they do get referred to an oncologist, that a conversation about clinical trials may be part of their um, part of their consultation and this should not be unexpected and it's a way to sort of create that expectation in the patients so there's less um, distrust when this conversations about clinical trials are brought up by their oncologist. In summary, clinical trials that are representative of our society provide more accurate information on effective treatments ultimately leading to improved survival for all patients. Racial and ethnic minorities are underrepresented in clinical trials, and this underrepresentation likely contributes to disparities in cancer outcomes and survival. Lack of trust in the medical system is a significant barrier to enrollment in clinical trials. And since many patients trust their primary care physicians more than their subspecialty providers, um, primary care physicians can help to narrow disparities in clinical trial enrollments by having conversations with patients about the benefit of um, clinical trials.